No. So. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. How is everyone doing tonight? I'm doing all right. Also, what's my that, I think. This week went bl- went by like a blur. Oh. <laughs> I a little bit earlier today, maybe about four or five, was like, oh shit, today's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it really How did up that on you. happen? It really does sneak up on you. <laughs> yeah. So what has everyone done in the last week? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said it went by like a blur. <laughs> well, I wasn't aware that you were everyone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Give me a second to load into Discord on my phone and I'll show you what I did this week. Oh boy. It's only been... I've, I've been having bad artist block anyway, so I've just been needle felting. Mm. Made an anxiety ridden olive. Ah. Okay. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's in general. You. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot. I messed up <laughs> the room. I was watching voice context and I was mildly confused. <laughs> uh, so, for those watching my end, um, I am playing Ark Knights again. I'm just waiting like four minutes for this thing to finish up. And there is an event that started today that I will flail at for a bit. And I'm playing Minecraft. Building a wall. Mm. Are you going to make the villagers pay for it? Yes. (laughs) They'll pay for it all. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I I have been watching a friend stream all this week. Oh. Yeah. A very strange week. <laughs> oh. Has anybody checked out the new stuff Minecraft added? Uh, I'm I'm aware that the update came out. I just haven't looked at what the what it actually entails. I it's haven't so looked. No shit. Well, it is so the wild weird. update. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one of the Minecrafters that I yeah. am subscribed to on YouTube, who I basically only watch for Minecraft news, put out a video saying, like, in the, like, thumbnail and stuff, saying the mild update, and, uh, <laughs> because apparently it's a disappointment or something, I don't know. Uh, mangrove trees are awesome, so no, it's not a disappointment. <laughs> I, I don't really pay attention to this particular YouTuber's opinions anyway. If that tells you anything, I've just haven't like, gotten a chance to actually watch the video. It really sounds like a for what's if I take on Pokemon News. <laughs> you don't want to be Minecraft version of what's if I. Yeah. Uh, it's like I. This is one of the people that's involved in Hermitcraft, and I just do not like him very much. But I get most of my Minecraft news from him because he covers everything fairly objectively until it comes time to actually give his opinions on things. Oh. I decided Zomavoid? to look at yeah, I decided to look at some of the additions and I'm so blind that I see the word frog light and immediately read it read it as forge light and <laughs> I, I did too <laughs> I did too man. <laughs> like, oh, Forge Light, what does this have to do? Are they changing up the forging table finally? No, it's Frog Light. Well, for me, it was like, what? Forge? Because, you know, Forge is the primary mod loader right now. So I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Man, okay, remember, when it, remember when the primary mod loader was just mod loader? Yeah. And you had to and, del- like delete this fucking folder that was in the game to make it work. Yeah. Yeah, and trying to install mods was a pain. Yeah, you had to like edit edit the entire bin file. Yeah, and like God forbid, two mods put in the same ID for a block. Mm -hmm. 
Because then you'd have to go through it and manually change the IDs. <laughs> yeah, modding Minecraft in like 2010 was a, a bit of a hassle. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember like my first experience modding Minecraft was <laughs> on team you were watching Nate do it for me. <laughs> yep. I mean, it was complicated back then. Yeah. yeah. And now everything's almost plug and play, even with data packs and uh, resource packs. And yeah. even with Forge, it. You know, the only thing configs really do anymore is just like, oh, I would prefer it to be like this rather than like this. You know? Okay, but modding a server is a different story. But yeah. yeah that's very different. Um, it's still nowhere near as, ha as much of a hassle as oh, it used no, to be. Oh, no, of course not. Like, I remember that um, it used to be that people would, like, pay server hosts to do the mods for them. Mm -hmm. Because it was that much of a hassle. Wow, uh, that's crazy. That's why we'll never have modded. Uh... Oh, this is like oh, 10 yeah. years ago, though. I know. It really isn't that hard anymore. Like, yeah. fairly recently, I was playing a mod pack on a server with some other people. It wasn't very difficult. It was I mean, a bit expensive, but not difficult. And so for the server? Mm-hmm. Mm. Because mods use up a lot of ram and so you oh. need to get a server with a lot of ram which means expensive yeah uh, that's like, I'm, I'm very unfamiliar with mods with minecraft i have passing familiarity with it mostly in the vein of playing mods rather than setting them up uh, the last time i really interacted it was probably about two years ago and even then, like, not too much, and there's new drama in the modding community that I'm super not aware of, uh, like, oh, that gosh. I don't have any context for, and I'm just like, what's happening? Cool. Do you have the, like, the general gist? Um, I think somebody is a pedophile? Ah, okay. <laughs> Goddamn pedophile. Or somebody was accused of being a pedophile or something because that's where no, it there usually was is oh okay like as far as i know there was proof but yeah. like uh but the problem is, is it has something to do with one of the big places to get mods or something i don't know it's huh. just one time i looked at twitter and everybody was talking well not everybody but like a few people were talking about it and i was like What's happening? <laughs> it's. I mean, get any group big enough, you're bound to have one or two in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like like the, this reminds you of the Pokemon community implosion that happened a few years ago. Or like you toss a stone in the Pokemon Poketuber community, and you're bound to hit a pedophile. Yeah. I mean, considering the the actual target demographic of Pokemon. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Like, kids getting into Minecraft was something that happened a good while after Minecraft release. It was yeah. not really targeted at kids. Not to say that it was unfriendly to kids, just wasn't in the uh the plans at first right cool. that's one thing i gotta say about minecraft they make it accessible for everybody mm -hmm. though i don't think little kids are gonna like the deep dark <laughs> i don't like the deep dark <laughs> it's terrifying I haven't played the update yet. I've explored some of it. Like off screen. Well, obviously off screen. I can't explore it on screen because none of that new stuff loaded yet. 
Uh, but in my creative test world, I found the uh, ancient city. Basically, just teleported there. <laughs> and, uh, actually, no, it's, it's crazy that they actually called it the Deep Dark. Now that I think about it, really? So one of the most popular mods for like the entirety of the oh, 2010s yeah. had a dimension called the Deep Dark. I forgot about that. What mod was this? Uh, the mod is called Extra Utilities. Mm, uh, I'm not familiar. Oh, and the, about that. the gimmick of the Deep Dark and Extra Utilities was that the dimension was filled from top to bottom with not just stone, but also ores. It was a you know place just to grind for ores. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, if you were in an area that wasn't lit in the deep dark, you would start taking damage. Hmm. Okay, I think I remember this. Is it like you had to use like compacted uh, cobblestone to get there or something? I think so, if I remember. Uh, that vaguely sounds to me like a monster in the dark was getting you and you couldn't see it. Because Extra Utilities did also have uh, the compressed cobblestone, so... Mm. Uh... One thing I think is really neat with this new update, while you look that up or whatever you're doing, <laughs> um, the wireless redstone. The skull Ooh, They actually added that? That's cool. Well, it's all sound based, but it's people are figuring out how to manipulate it to become wireless redstone. Yeah, uh, they've been doing that for ages. It's really cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, like as soon as the skulk sensors came out, um, or were previewed at least. Uh, yeah, the redstone community went wild. Mm -hmm. To the point where there's like a mod that added them in prematurely, but they got kind of the mechanics wrong because they assumed at that point that it was sound based, but no, it's vibration based. Hmm. Cool. It's a it's a it's a cool little feature, and I I, I can't wait to explore some ways of using it. I'm not big on redstone, you know that. Yeah. That makes me excited to try different things now. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm yeah, just Just reading on the things. descriptions on the wiki is a bit confusing. I'll probably have to watch a video at some point really explaining what everything does. Man, my viewers are just watching me endlessly refresh through the support operators because... Oh, there we go. Uh, I was looking for a very specific support that nobody had. And now I found it. And I'm building a full stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get the most tedious stuff done because I don't do any building on camera as it is. I should maybe try to play some vanilla minecraft at some point just to re-familiar myself or yeah re you're gonna myself with vanilla yeah if you're gonna be on um minecraft foxfire then you're gonna have to at some point <laughs> yeah because there is a ton of stuff that i just am no longer familiar with you mm. know it comes back and, to like riding a bike yeah and, and part of it was i was already one of those people that was like you know, I see something from Minecraft, and I was like, what mod is this from? <laughs> oh, Minecraft! <laughs> Minecraft has a very modded feel now. That's Even what I'm the... getting from it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I haven't played around with the Alay yet, but that one really feels modded. Find drop blocks. Huh. Uh, let's see if this works. Uh, it makes me seeing all this new stuff in 1.9 makes me very excited for season two of Foxfire Minecraft. Mm -hmm. Also, I went to the store yesterday, and I saw cherry vanilla Coca Cola, which seems good. So I'm drinking that, and it is good because I, I just like vanilla flavor. 
Vanilla is the best flavor of ice cream. And it's a good flavor for everything else, so... Yeah. It, I mean, it's not my favorite flavor of ice cream, but I definitely appreciate it, especially like a really good vanilla ice cream. Mm -hmm. Like your typical store-bought vanilla ice cream. Blech. No, thank you. But like, really good, especially like from an actual ice cream shop. Vanilla ice cream, so good. Yeah. Good soft serve. Uh, you should not do that. Okay. And fun fact, like vanilla is one of the most complex ingredients in terms of flavor profiles out there. <laughs> so, um, the uh, olfactory component of it is just there's so many different uh, compounds in it and stuff that it just is a very complex flavor profile. Gotcha. I just, I've always, uh, the only, I like mixing it with other flavors. Like over the weekend, I bought fresh blackberries and just mashed them up and mixed it with vanilla ice cream to make blackberry ice cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was so good. It was so good. I had no right being as good as it was. Uh, I think I can burn this down now. So, uh, who watched the, uh, I forget what they're called, the not E3, uh, Summer Game Fest, there we go. <laughs> I, I, an eye on Twitter. I watched it before coming on, and there is a few things I find really interesting here, or in it. Like, um, one thing I found notable is, uh, humankind kind of, uh, they're attempting to be a competitor to civilization. Mm -hmm. They're and, and with a different gimmick that as you progress through the game, you actually develop new cultures and they're adding in an expansion that lets you play as the Cubans in the contemporary era. And I'm like, huh, that's brave. I, yeah. I was just about to say that that's very bold. I mean, that could have uh that can go bad. Yeah, that, that's braver than civilization will ever be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now watch Civ, watch you play as Adolf Hitler. Oh, I mean, uh, I think the first Civ had Hitler? I think so, yeah. I think it did. I, I wish Civ could be that brave again. Because it's actually a little bit um, hypocritical that they uh, get some of these very, you know, militaristic, terrible, you know, not terrible, but, you know, very brutal leaders like, you know, Genghis Khan and mm -hmm. who else? I can't think right Isn't now. Isn't the Hondam commander or a leader? Uh, in five. Uh, you know, Montezuma of the Aztecs. And people like that, but they're not brave enough to add, you know, Hitler or yeah, Mussolini. Um, yeah. Oh, what was the emperor in Japan during World War Two? Hirohito. Yeah, that's it. But uh, you know, I, I I just I I think it's they're trying to go for a thing that they're now trying to avoid le you know people that were leaders, good or bad in living memory. But Ooh. even then, like, World War II is getting out of living memory at this point. Yeah. Something will be just in history books soon. Yep. So, Isn't you know, there only, like, a handful of veterans left from World War II? Probably. It's depressing as that it sounds. I mean, they could uh, at least don't... add some World War One leaders, you know? Oh, yeah. Easily. I just don't like the fact that we're trying to erase... Like, I, I know it's, it's a hypocrite, not hypocritical thing, but, uh... 
It's like an argument everyone brings up when people try to remove Nazi imagery from video games. It's like, oh, you're erasing history. They kind of are. We, yeah, yeah. the Nazis did terrible things. We have to just agree that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it would be entirely fine for them to say, hey, we're not glorifying these people by putting them in the game, but rather we think that they could add some interesting gameplay mechanics, you know, or at least discussions. You know. Or another game that doesn't make it historically accurate. Yeah. And, like, Civilization has never been about historical accuracy. If you want oh, historical God, no. <laughs> accuracy... You know, go for something like Total War or, um, you know. Mm -hmm. Civilization is more of a board game than a, you know, yeah. history simul simulator. That's a great way to describe uh, Civ. But yeah, I just like, you know, I, I, so, you know, more specifically with humankind, the expansion is with Latin American uh, cultures. So, uh, in each era, I, I think it was uh, Karalans, Incans, uh, I can't remember. Uh, there was Argentinians in there as well, as well as Cubans. So, I was like, whoa, Cubans, that's Real brave. <laughs> I, th I I appreciate them to add the Cubans because like, I'm that's something I've never seen yeah. any strategy game outside of Red Alert Two add as a playable. I don't want to say race, but culture. Yeah, culture. I mean, they're called cultures in <laughs> humankind, so. Yeah, that's like this is like uh like I said, the only time I've ever seen Cuba as a playable anything was in Red Alert 2. And that's just an offshoot that's just uh Soviet with suicide bombers. Mm. Yeah. Also, like uh another thing I found crazy is that uh Mihoyo is putting out two new games and I'm just like, what the fuck? How is Mihoyo doing this, you know? <laughs> and they're the devs of what? Uh, Genshin Impact. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. And I believe Honkai Impact. <laughs> well, they should show some love to the Switch. <laughs> I've, I've yeah, kind they're, of been uh... Genshin. What's that? Sorry. I kind of wanted to play Genshin Impact, but I'm not going to play that on my phone, and I'm not going to play that on my computer. <laughs> I don't have a PlayStation. I I tried it. I played for like I don't know, maybe an hour at most two, and I was like, nah, no. Not good. <laughs> it's not even not good. It's that it. Eh, I don't know. I guess I just don't get it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you ever play a game and you you can see why some people might like it, but you're just kind of sitting here like. I don't get it. Uh, yeah. Okay, definitely. I have definitely been in that area before. Like, you can't even say you're disappointed or anything like that. It's just not doing it for you. That's mm. what it was like for me with Genshin. Like, I didn't even get to the gotcha part of Genshin Impact. You dropped it fast. <laughs> oh, um, I forgot where, because I know I saw it on, in a tweet, but the, it leaked. I, I, I mentioned it in the chat, too. That it leaked that we're going to uh, direct next week. Getting a what? Nintendo Direct. Ooh. That'd be neat. On the 15th, supposedly. Again, uh, does not surprise me. Uh, it, it's like the perfect timing. It's, it's expected, I think. You know we just got the Pokemon trailer literally two weeks ago. But compared to what we would normally get in the um, 
treehouse? That was like a, a minuscule tidbit of information. Do you think they would show anything off at the uh, in a direct for Pokemon? Well, soon after. I mean, at release? this point, with a Nintendo Direct, they would have to at least mention something. Like they did the same thing with Sword and Shield. I don't remember. I remember uh, while you with with the in the treehouse. In the direct, and then in the treehouse. Oh, okay. Yeah, because so that was when we had an Nessa revealed. Mm, you're right, I remember that. So do you think it's safe to say we might see Pokemon news next week, possibly? Yep. Oh, that'd be awesome. Uh, I hope that, that we get the region name. <laughs> I know it's uh, it's, a, yeah. it's such a small thing. It's such a small thing to hope for, but I'm just tired of calling it the Spain region. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's what I want, too. <laughs> I, I wonder if there's a reason why they're holding off, or they just haven't found an English version of it yet, or something. I mean, or that, that could be the case. Mm. See, that's, what, know, that's my... the only thing I can think has been delaying it. I mean, that kind yeah. of thing I doubt. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could see that happening, that, you know, it, it might even be one of the last things actually put on the table, because, like, ultimately it doesn't matter too much. You could just do a Control-F for all mentions of region name and you know <laughs> replace it with yeah definitely. the name of the region you know it just like, won't be probably able to a, a, a case form. of brainstorming that something that sounds punchy sound you know a lot goes into a name yeah that's very true and now we have pokemon Smoliv and Lechonk. <laughs> Literal memes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love them both. Uh, like, I, I've, like, the Pokedex is, like, Kaylee has been creating for, um, her stuff. I'm sorry, I heard my name. I'm focusing really hard right now. <laughs> We are just talking about Pokemon names and how, like, with your, uh, deck, the fake decks you've been making, your names are very well thought out and, intru and intrusive and they fit perfectly. I've been attempting to do something similar for my fake decks project. And Pokemon comes out with literal meme names. <laughs> I, I just don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> It's like, I've been buzzing my ass trying to come up with interesting names that I can just go with memes. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm focusing really hard on Arknights right fine. now. You're fine. You're <laughs> fine. Now that I think about it, something I wish they did with LeChunk, it, it should have been Alchunk instead. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of agree. It's still a fucking great name. That's just a minor quibble for me now that I think about it, because I'm like, it's in Spain. Or, you know, it's <laughs> in fake Spain. It it shouldn't be Lechonk, it should be Alchonk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's... I wonder, I hope they keep, I, I think we mentioned this last week, but I hope they do keep the food theme for it, somehow. Hmm. Make it a truffle pig or go full roast pig. Yeah, yeah. I've never been so invested in how a Pokemon turns out before. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm really wondering what they're gonna do with Smolov because yeah, that can go any which way. Yeah, it's like and I know what we talked about last week. <laughs> like, I don't expect uh... it because the waifu mon usually isn't early route mons. Uh, Badu was pretty early. Badu was a yeah. waifu mon? Rose Raid? Rose Raid. <laughs> Routes 2 then, because Routes was, what, Route 3? Yeah. 4? Uh, yeah. Routes was like the second fucking route of Hoenn. Yeah. <laughs> it is like 2% encounter, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I take that back. It could be an early route waifu mon, which yeah. would be yeah. interesting. Yeah, because, like, I do consider Rose Rage to be one of the waifu mons, because look at it. <laughs> it's an attractive, it can be an attractive Pokemon. 
what I appreciate with Roserade, it doesn't feel overly feminine. Like, it could easily fit a male Pokemon. Yeah. Ro Roselia, very female Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Roserade, an effeminate knight. Doesn't have to be male or female. It reminds me of a musketeer. Like, uh... Yeah. No, you know, this would actually be a great way to... You know what Roserade really reminds me of? That one character in Game of Thrones, the, the um, Marjorie's brother. No, oh, what was his name? <laughs> no, for a fact, you, uh, Giga and Kaylee, I know the character because they're past that part in the... Um, way past. He's, like, introduced in the first season, I think. Around. Oh, what? Yeah. I, know. I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, like, uh, the one gay character. <laughs> what are we talking about? Marjorie's brother. I can't remember his name. Oh, um... Fuck. That's what I know. Loris. Yeah... Why are we suddenly Rose talking Raid about reminds... Game of Thrones? <laughs> yeah. We're, no, because that's what, I, that's what Rose Raid reminds me of. It reminds me oh, of him. okay. <laughs> because right conveniently, uh, Giga and I were watching a bit more of Season 5 earlier in the week. I know. I, I saw that, that the Game of Thrones counter has been updated when I went to watch <laughs> a movie. <sighs> You're getting to the good parts of that season now. Yeah. I think we have, like, two more episodes left in Season 5. Yeah. So, yeah. I wasn't paying too much attention. I was like, oh, they watched a few more episodes. Okay, and now I'm going to watch my movie. <laughs> uh, oh, Ooh, another geez. interesting game from the Summer Game Fest. Uh, a game called Nightingale. It's, hmm. you know, another kind of similar to Minecraft, you know, survival building thing. With a gimmick of uh, like a dimensional travel thing similar to Mist, and it oh, makes me wonder: that's, Did the uh... people who make it play Minecraft with Mistcraft installed? Because <laughs> it has that exact vibe. <laughs> that's an interesting combination. Yeah, because like one of the most popular mods in Minecraft, uh, you, you know, her. Up until like 164, I think, maybe 1710, was Mistcraft. It was essentially making randomized worlds with pages and books and stuff. I think and it was 1710. Yeah, I mean, it was popular throughout like 14, whatever, all the way up to either 164 or 1710. And then Mojang did like this April Fool's thing where it was basically just implementing that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that was the coolest April Fool's update ever. But yeah, like, I was watching the trailer and I was like, huh, I think these people played Minecraft with Mistcraft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always down for more games like Minecraft if they're done well. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Like, so many of them are just kind of, uh... Bad. Kind of shovelware, you know? Like, mm -hmm. here's an open world... It. And it just literally, that's a. That's why I'm glad Minecraft is like. Ending on their story, environmental storytelling so well. Yeah, yeah. Like with the Deep Dark and uh, the Skulk Blocks and all that weird Lovecraftian shit. Like, I thought the end was the most mysterious dimension in Minecraft. This Deep Dark might lead to something even more mysterious than the end. <laughs> There is a portal in the center of the city, and it's actually labeled portal. Yeah, it, the structure is labeled portal, and nobody knows why. The best part is, the blocks <laughs> around it cannot be moved, or and if you break them, you don't get them. Yeah. But just like an end, uh, end, um, end portal frame. Okay, but you can't break an end portal frame without creative. Or glitches. Right, I always forget about that. You can, however, I, delete them with a mushroom, which Dream had to do. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> God, I hope Dream does another one of those things soon. We're fun. I might have to go back and watch the whole playlist again. Uh, 
Uh, but, like, I'm convinced we're going to be getting a dimension either in uh, 1.20 1.20 or 1.21. Hmm. They have the groundwork set for it, like an ultra end game dimension. Yeah. Scarier than the end or the nether. Okay, but here's the thing, like, by all accounts, the warden isn't meant to be fought. No, it's, it's a not. stealth game boss, which is really cool. Uh huh. But, like, theoretically, the way to light the portal would be to defeat the warden, and. Mm -hmm. It seems that's like funny. that's counter to what they're trying to do with it. Or maybe there's going to be, like, hidden items around the city, because people are finding, like, hidden skulls in secret rooms. Maybe it's hmm. going to be, like, collect three things from the city and we'll pop them into place and open the gateway. It could just be in the end of the day environmental storytelling saying the Skulk and the Warden and all this stuff came from a different world. Killed whoever was in the ancient city and just consumed the place. Hmm. Sorry, and now I was just talking to Shadow in Zedge because I need to borrow a specific unit and he's just telling me to use this other unit, which, you know, fair enough. Mm -hmm. like that that other unit has long range, but not infinite range, which is the thing that I want. <laughs> well, uh, before I got on tonight, I was watching YouTubers I follow, and they were going and looking for the ancient city, and they were killing the warden. Yeah. I've never seen such a terrifying creature fight before. It one shots you even if you're in netherite. No, it two shots like, you. Oh yeah, with the hyper beam thing. Mm. That's what scares me. It's like it shoots through walls. It's like I don't know if that's meant to be that way or not, but that's like Oh man, this reminds me that um like Impulse was part of a Hermit um UHC thing that mm -hmm was basically on a 1.19 um, snapshot and like UHC is basically um, I gotta pause this so I can explain UHC is basically ultra hardcore it's a survival games type thing where you are put in teams or you're put alone this one was alone because there weren't enough players for teams um, you're scattered across uh the world within like a certain boundary and your goal is to basically be the ma last man standing but your health does not regen by itself you have to have like golden apples or suspicious stew or that kind of thing and mm -hmm. um impulse made it pretty far and but when he did die he went into spectator mode and went to watch um i think it was joe hills and joe hills was underground basically treed by a warden and a joe hills attempted to fight the warden in a uhc and that did not go well but it was fucking hilarious <laughs> i don't think it's that's that's suicide because i'm not sure it's even possible to well, kill he was he was on half a heart anyway so like oh, wow so, so why not go he, out with the bank yeah basically <laughs> he wanted to just have fun in the last bit. Mm -hmm. I was with the video I was watching, it was uh, five guys basically just shooting at the warden from a distance. And the warden picking them off one by one with its sonic hyper beam. And it's just like, it made me think, it's like, how can one per. This is. Like you said, it's not meant to be fought, it's meant to be snuck past. Yeah. If this is has to kill it by one person, that's gonna suck. Yeah, this is not gonna work, Shadow. Why did you tell me to use Ifrit? Whatever. Oh, well, like I said, seeing all this new stuff, it makes me very excited for Foxfire Minecraft Season 2. I can only imagine the madness we're going to end up getting into. 
Yeah. I gotta say, those people on Planet Minecraft, they update this shit fast. Yeah, they do. Minecraft, whoever does these vanilla tweaks. Oh, that's not really Planet Minecraft, but yeah. I didn't mean- I meant to say vanilla tweaks, I didn't mean mm. Planet Minecraft. But, uh... It was day one, I was like, oh no, all my things are broken, let me go see if they updated. And every single thing was updated. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That was an entire days long process of, uh. Yeah. Clean out data packs and everything. I added some new data packs to my world too and stuff. Uh, the elevator one? I like that. Hmm. It literally works the way the modded one did. Hmm. You just drop an ender pearl on a piece of wool and it turns it into an elevator. Uh, so when oh, we yeah. do Foxfire, I may request that one if that's okay. Uh, I don't know how to use it, but maybe, sure. Well, it's not hard. You just stand on it and jump, and it just teleports you to a elevator above you. I use certain too soon. I or assume crouching thing. teleports you to the one below it. Exactly. And for the build I want to do, because I, I, I've been thinking about Fox vs. 2 for a while, <laughs> um, I'm going to need a way to get up high really easily. Hmm. You know, you could just fly? <laughs> yeah, but survival. At least for a little bit. Yeah, I thought that we were... Uh, honestly, like, we can't stick to survival life and try... <laughs> Oh god, no, especially what I plan on building, there's no way in hell it's I mean, possible. you two can't. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> oh, but I like the build, so it makes sense to not... Like, that's what I'm saying, let's try survival for at least... Uh, more than two episodes? Yeah, more than two episodes. Like, set a number, then say, okay... Or how about this, we set it, we kill a boss, a certain boss, then we can all go into creative mode whenever we want. Thinking yeah, about it. doing multiplayer Minecraft made me think about a certain mod pack that's really neat called Material Energy. Hmm. And there's a Material Energy 5 for Minecraft 112. That <laughs> might be interesting. What's the mod list? And that's why I don't like mods because I have to use old Minecraft. <laughs> I'm so used to like new uh, features and stuff. So about Material that. Energy 4, at least, was an almost transcendent experience. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, Does it have lanterns, though? I don't remember. I remember. That was a major thing. It's like, um, when I first started playing Minecraft, I did mod it originally. Uh, with the help of uh, Twitch, funny enough, has a launcher. And it has plug-and-play mods for Minecraft in it. I was using that for a while. And the mod packs I wanted to use would make it so you couldn't have crossbows or lanterns. I was like, hmm, I need crossbows and lanterns. <laughs> lanterns especially, I love the aesthetic. Damn, I actually like the way this wall's turning now, and it's just literally a flat thing right now. Uh, I, I guess that's because I'm upgrading the palisade walls to a s actual stone wall. So it's like, huh, this is what a fortress looks like. Yeah, it would be neat to do Material Energy 5 at some point. There was one mod I always loved, and I wish... I, I think it's a dead mod now, back in 1.16. Archimedes mod that let you build ships and airships. Yeah. Oh, so, <clears throat> yeah, the thing with Material Energy, you know, the series, is it's not a mod, it's a mod pack of many, <laughs> many mods. 
and it's a story-based er, mod pack. Oh, that's cool. Also, oh, like, crash landing type thing. Yeah. Uh, so, the Material Energy series gets a little bit creepy, actually. Yeah, because, uh, you know, the kind of joke with it is that it's basically set after, you know, the, the player has already gone through the entirety of another mod pack and basically reached a point where reality kind of just breaks. And <laughs> you have to deal with the repercussions of that. <clears throat> it's almost like a good fourth wall break kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate a really good fourth wall break. Uh, so, mods would be 100% no-go for Foxfire, right? Uh, I'd rather not have to deal okay. with mods. So I was just going to suggest one that might make things interesting. Voice mod, where, this, where it's uh, oh. proximity chat. There's no point. We, we don't have enough players no. for that. No. It would be funny. Like, if we were actually... That, yeah, that, that would only be good if we were actually, like... Playing actively multiple times a day, kind of thing. Yeah, that that wouldn't work for how we do things. Yeah, I mean there are. I do go on. I did go in the first Fox Fire season. I did go on during the day to build stuff. If I, I tried, I treated it as regular Minecraft. Yeah, but we weren't both on the same time. Usually, once in a blue moon. Yeah, and saw each other. and I was like, "Oh, you're on." And he's like, "Yeah, okay, let's go do that. let's go do our own respectively different things." <laughs> It'll be very interesting with more people, though. That, that's what has me super excited. I love seeing other people's build styles. Sorry, focusing again. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I was just saying I like seeing other people's I know. build styles. Okay. That, it's just... That's why I didn't respond. It's because I'm focusing a little too hard. I think I'm going to make palming next. Needle felt it. <laughs> like it took you know it took me forever to find a picture of its body. It's I've only ever seen it from like frontward facing. It's like I couldn't tell yeah. if it was just all chunky, or if it was fluffy. If it was just skinny with fat arms. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a chonker's mouse. Then that would all that would leave me besides the starters is the legendary Pokemon, and I'm not sure if those are possible to needle felt that easily. <laughs> <laughs> those are. I mean, I made the, I made a Chimera, so I'm not afraid to take on a good challenge. Uh, but especially the Cyber Dragon one, that's a that's a beast to tackle in any form of creation. Yeah. Right on. Do you think the third legendary is going to be tied to them, or do you think it's going to be a separate thing like Eternatus was? Uh, no clue. Yeah. I don't think you can even speculate on that, really. Yeah. No, you can't. Not anymore. They completely changed it up after, uh... uh in a way, Necrozma wasn't... The only way it was related to it was because it was a prism. Did not resemble any uh, form of a third legendary. Well, no, but it came. did kind of eat them. So but yeah, because they're light, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's kind of related in that Necrozma can eat them. <laughs> the fact that it's a prism, and also it's that it's kind of also an eclipse. Yeah. It... Really? Yeah, that's true. It just didn't fit aesthetically, with sun and a, a line in the bat. Yeah. I, oh, I would because... also say that there's no real lore truly connecting uh, Necrozma to the other two. Right. No, Ex it's... Except for in the anime, where, like, 
the, the anime had this plot where um, Necrozma was known to have like something in common with Sogaleo and Lunala because when Necrozma was weakened the first time, then Sogaleo and Lunala gave it their light or something <laughs> silly like that. Yeah. Fucking telepathic Nagonadel. <laughs> Speaking of that, did you hear that James Turner's leaving Game Freak? I did not hear yeah. that. Yeah, he's leaving Game Freak to start his own game company, I think. <laughs> Good for him. Yep. That, well, I'm happy for him that he's doing that. I am bummed out because his, some of his designs were the best in the series. Yeah. Good for him. Like, there, there's something to be said, though, that with something that's fully led by James Turner, you can get a very James Turner experience, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Whereas, you know, with James Turner just working at Game Freak, you, you know, you, you can't really get something with his primary input, you know? Yeah. Right. Look forward to seeing what comes of his new endeavor. Yeah, yeah, that'll be interesting. I will definitely be watching that, but like, I am going to miss his design so much. I mean, Bowler's, um, ice cream cone. Make sure Poipo was one of his designs. Poipo, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, like, that makes sense. Like, a lot of Gen 5 was his. Mm -hmm. Not Gen 5. Yeah, Gen 5 was a lot, a lot of Gen, Gen 5. Gen 5 and Gen 7, as... mostly. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gen 8, too. Oh, what the hell just fell? <laughs> I think the remote fell. The, yeah, the remote fell off. Oops. Isn't that What's scary when something falls and you have no idea what it is? And you're like, <laughs> yes. oh, God. oh, God. Curse you, gravity. Um, but uh, especially in Gen 8, a lot was his, too. Like, cause he was the art, the head art in that. Um, I kind of had a feeling because Palmy, Lechonk, even the the starters and the legendaries had no feel of his work. I kind of had a feeling he wasn't going to be a major part of it, but having him completely gone—that's damn, that sucks. So, where did you hear this? Uh, hold on, I can pull it up. I think it was... It was on Twitter, I know that much. Oh, no, that's Facebook, not Twitter. <laughs> Give me one second. No, it was from... It I reminds saw the me to do my regular it. check of Operation Decoded. The Riddler posted a bit about it. James Turner himself saw it. Ah. <laughs> Darn. No update on Operation Decoded since January 1st. Oh, but that is, uh... I mean, good luck to him, but I will miss his work. Hmm. Like, uh, same thing with Masuda. have to miss his work for too long, can, uh, hopefully. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I look forward to seeing what new endeavors he does. Like, same thing with Masuda. I am going to miss his music. Sure, he's still working for game... He's working for Pokemon still. But he's no longer a Game Freak. <laughs> yeah. And really, I... I, I think... Like, I can't remember the exact name of his position, but the, his new position really screamed... He is actually retiring, but... Mm -hmm. We're still using him as like a consultant, you know, type yeah. thing. Literally, all of it. It's consultant. That's his head, like lead consultant in Pokemon. It, it was something like head contemporary fellow or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Some, it, it's like literally the most. Um, I will be it, up. It's one of those position names that you're like, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> I was the call same it, like, energy of Ash and Doping. Professor's research fellows yeah. and journeys. <laughs> it, it's literally the uh, the work equivalent of a participation uh, a participation trophy. Now that makes me wonder who's going to be doing the music because 
the music, I would say, is just as important for the rest of the game with Pokemon. Yeah. And I know the, um, the Undertale guy is doing music for it, but I don't think they're going to let him be a full of music. Why wouldn't they? Usually, Game Freak is an only kind of thing. Uh, you James said Turner. that a couple podcasts ago, and I brought up James Turner. <laughs> like, I just can't see, um, Toby, Toby Fox is his name. Yep. I can't see him being full lead music dev. But, I can why see not? I doing a few trap. I don't know. I mean, the problem with that is that it would take away his time from working on Delta Room. Yeah, but then he gets that Nintendo money. <laughs> Yeah. Which I, I, so, I, then again, isn't he already getting Nintendo money? He would get more <laughs> Nintendo money if he wasn't basically just working on commission. Uh, that's what I was looking for. Commission. He feels like more of a commission. Thing Freelancer with, is yeah. the term yeah. you're looking for. A uh, freelance. Yeah. He like, he really feels more like a freelancer with Game Freak than anything. A freelancer is what I am. So. Mm -hmm. Also, I did find the official name of Masada's new position. Chief yeah. Creative Fellow. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a... Uh... Yeah, it's like, what does that mean? <laughs> it uh, means whatever they want it probably to means... Yeah, it, it, it means most likely he's retiring, but he's on call for people to say, Hey, do you think this is good? You know? Hey, we need you to do a music track for a game. Think you're ready no, for that? No, like, not even that. I, it might just be like PR stuff, like be on yeah. camera for us. Yeah, that too. It's. And he did have some great bangers in. Oh yeah, absolutely. The games. It, he made the Arceus theme, so that's <laughs> take that as you want. Arguably one of the best themes in Pokemon, boss uh, legendary battles. <laughs> eh, That's it's one of my favorites. Garatina above it. I put Ultra Garatina, Necrozma yeah, above it. Huh? I yeah, put actually, Ultra... Giratina and Ultra, Ultra Necrozma. Necrozma. Uh, Ultra Necrozma is a damn bop. Also, like, Ho. -Oh. That's something. I don't remember Ho's -Oh theme. Mm, uh, Ho -Oh mostly maybe? just had a theme in Heart Going Soul Silver. <laughs> I think the game, I gotta replay Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I don't. I feel like it's been too long. I. I, I have a, a confession to make that <clears throat> the main reason that I really like Heart Gold and Soul Silver is I think they nailed the menu design. <laughs> I know oh. that's a really silly reason to just, like, yes, that's why it's my favorite, but, like, really, that, that's what it is. Yeah. The menu but design the has and UI. Heart Gold. Uh, yeah. You know what you so like, there's, so... Like, there's a reason why X and Y is my favorite. The UI for that was so clean, and uh, the little I, bottom screen shit was perfect. Yeah, I, I preferred the the UI in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. A good aesthetic. And four. Well, platinum onward. <laughs> Speaking of UIs, what do y'all think about the Sun and Violet UI? I have no opinion. I don't really remember anything. enough of it to to really have an opinion. I'm like barely there. Yeah. Which it, it's good for no bottom screen games. Yeah. You don't like it doesn't cover the screen. You see the battle. You see the Pokemon. You know, it seems that's... even more minimalistic than uh, Sword and Shield was. Yeah, that's kind of one of the funny things with the DS, isn't it? That like, I remember when the DS was coming out, everybody's like, a second screen? Who needs a second screen? <laughs> and I saw screen. that second screen. <laughs> and, and um... now, like, I I think of handheld consoles, and I'm just like, where's my second screen? <laughs> yeah, it's like, and it's then like... Pokemon. Move to the switch, and we we're all like, Where's the second screen? Come on, yeah. 
Like, because, I remember that was, like, one of the biggest things when Pokemon went to the Switch. It's like, where are you going to have the attacks? Where is going to be the menu? <laughs> oh, those were simpler times. Yeah. Yeah, but anyone else remember those, uh, like, all that controversy behind the second screen, you know? Do we no, really I, need I, a second screen? Okay, so nope. I wasn't really actively following online Pokemon discourse when the DS came out. It wasn't Pokemon, it was I mean, the DS. Yeah. Okay, I but I still wasn't well. actually following online discourse at that point. It wasn't even it was... uh, online. Like, going on, like, G like watching stuff on... I mean, you probably wouldn't, didn't do this, but, like, I remember watching stuff on G4, and they're like, mm -hmm. the you know, the second screen is so unnecessary, we would ev never really need it. Blah, blah, Literally. Blah. Like, they made fun of the DS. Yeah, literally uh -huh. all I remember about G4 is that one show that said that if you've played Ruby and Sapphire, you don't need to play Emerald. What? <laughs> yeah, I brought I'll this up like several play. podcasts ago. Uh, I think it was X Play or something, and like Emerald had just came out, and I was watching the their variety gaming show, and they were just complaining about how Emerald was just Ruby and Sapphire again. <laughs> Better. Yeah. That's the point. It was just funny. More than anything. Hmm. And let's face it, uh, Emerald changed up the story, too. Yeah. It yeah. made it better. Yeah. It made it really good. I didn't play Ruby and Sapphire. I only played Emerald. And seeing the, seeing the, I guess I would assume the way it originally was with, um, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, where it's like, no, even then, they both were kind of antagonistic, both teams, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. The way I always thought it was, well, one was the one trying to stop them, and the others were bad guys. Uh... Just thinking about X Play reminds me. Um, one of the reviews they had was for a game called Shining Force Neo, and like one of the the criticisms they had of it is there were characters that had voice lines that they would repeat way too much, and one of those voice lines that repeated way too much. This one character would constantly use fireballs, and every time, hot stuff coming your way. <laughs> so they did a skit on that, and it was amazing. I vaguely remember that. Like I, like I have uh, a lot of vivid memories with early X Play. And that one, I do remember a skit like that. Yep, that's just like make <laughs> like overused battle quotes. Who would imagine that? Yeah. Y yes, I, I already found the video. <laughs> <laughs> now that is not our grand side, it's OBS. Now X Play is a sad former shell of itself. Wait, it's it still exists? G4 came back. G4 had like a, re a, a, hmm. a pitiful resurgence just recently, and uh, it's it's it, they got so woke. It's not funny. Mm. Uh, Adam Hustler sounds about right. He became like a uh, your stereotypical Antifa. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Like no wonder why Morgan Webb didn't want to come back for this. And like they they brought on YouTubers who were like the grossest kind of YouTuber to be part of the uh, show. I don't, I don't mean gross as in a person. I mean gross as their beliefs. Like if mm -hmm. they brought Ethan Klein on as a host, like that kind of gross. Yeah. I mean, so when you said gross, things. the first thing that I thought of was like, um, wow, how could I not remember the name Logan? Paul, there we go. Oh, like that like kind that of was yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
it, it's just sad because it's like I grew up with G4 and Tech TV. I I remember Tech TV. Four was G4. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Actually, wow. Can we go back to those times? Yeah. I don't want to be a 28 year old anymore. I want to go back to when things were simple. I want to go back and take school more seriously. <laughs> I want to go back and not go to Catholic school and go get an actual education. You see, my thing is, I didn't even dislike school, I just didn't take it seriously. I mean, where I went to school, no one took it seriously, it was that bad. Because, like, you know, most of the other kids hated going to school, but, like, did all the work, and I was the one that liked going to school, but didn't do any work whatsoever. I. It depends on my how where I was sitting. Sometimes I loved going to school. Sometimes I hated it. I did my work regardless. <laughs> the older I got, the more I hated it. Oh, that one. That run was scuffed, but I won. <laughs> hey. I did something really stupid near the end. <laughs> Uh, basically, this one very strong operator has a skill that you can toggle on and off, or it automatically turns off when she runs out of ammo. And I was furiously clicking to try to activate it in the count-up to when it would be ready to activate, to the point where I accidentally activated it, clicked her again, and then deactivated it. <laughs> I didn't know there was operators that had, like, limited ammo. Uh, there's only, like, a few of them. I guess they're ultra-powerful, then, if they're limited? No, it's more just generally how their skills work. Because okay. otherwise they're infinite duration. Like, I think the, the ones that come to mind are both fairly meta sniper units, but it just kind of makes sense that they would have ammo, especially when... Like, okay, so one of them is probably the most broken unit in the game besides a uh, particular guard, mm -hmm. but it's kind of because her skill has ammo. Oh, okay. Oh god, what is this challenge? What are the odds we get Elder Scrolls news this year? <laughs> low. Very low. Unless you count ESO, in which case that's a guaranteed. Um, yeah. uh, I'm mostly going for, yes, Elder Scrolls 6. Then say Elder Scrolls 6, because ESO is very much an Elder Scrolls game. <laughs> mm. I know. You don't even think they'll give us, hey, we're working on a kind of update? No. No. Uh, there should be focusing more on Starfield stuff that comes out early next year. Yeah. Man, what the hell is this challenge? I'll just clear out the ones that I haven't done yet. Wonder in the direct next week we'll get to know more about Star um, No Man's Sky on the Switch. Yeah, that that's I, I a mystery. Think it's crazy that that's even happening. I I want to know how it runs on the Switch. It's like, how did... Well, I mean, I think people just don't think the Switch is as powerful as it really is. Yeah. And it's because it's a handheld. Um, same can be said for, like, the GameCube back in that era. No, oh, fair. I mm -hmm. think the GameCube was, like, if I'm remembering correctly, wasn't it the most powerful of the three at the time? The Between the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox? Um... <laughs> I think it might have been equal to the Xbox. Mm. 
But yeah, you know, and just because it's a Nintendo console, people just kind of assume that it wasn't very powerful. <laughs> the GameCube was a little powerhouse. Yeah, it was. Had some, had a great library too. Mm -hmm. So did the PS2. Oh yeah, like that that era of gaming, all, every yeah. system had great lineups. Like. Or I had no right being so good. Yeah, I mean, I I wasn't an Xbox kid, so I know nothing about the Xbox library, but, like, PlayStation 2 and GameCube? Man. Uh, early Xbox? Mm, I can just mostly say, like, uh, Halo. That was the big draw for it. Yeah. I think I had, like, Jack and... Baxter? Not Xbox, no. Oh, that's PlayStation? What was... Uh, Banjo-Kazooie was Xbox. That was also Nintendo, wasn't it? Uh... I th thought that... Uh... There wasn't a Banjo-Kazooie game on the Xbox. Like, I'm pretty sure Nuts and Bolts was the third one. You know, the one after Banjo-Tooie? I don't remember. Because Banzo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie, you know, they were on the N64, mm -hmm. and I think it didn't really get much else until Nuts and Bolts. I'm having a hard time. Like, I vaguely remember <clears throat> like Banjo Kazooie being an Xbox special thing for. I don't know. It's like just sticking into my memory for some reason. Uh oh. Um. So, Banjo-Kazooie was re-released on the Xbox 360 via the Xbox Live Arcade. Am I what I'm remembering, then? Now that I think about it, or I don't think early Xbox had much exclusives. It was a 360 when it started getting the exclusives. Yeah. Also, PlayStation I I... 1 had a ton of great exclusives, too. PlayStation had, period, has great exclusives. Yeah, yeah. But, like, you know, my main nostalgia era for video games is definitely between the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. Mm -hmm. So, I am biased. <laughs> That's fair. I'm very biased with PC for that era, because I was majority PC gamer as a little kid because that's what we had. We had the PC. And uh, so that's why I'm so uh, akin to like Red Alert, Age of Empires, yeah. Diablo. Games no little kid should be playing, but I play them. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think Age I mean, of Empires is fair for any age. Yeah. I mean, I was watching my dad play Grand Theft Auto when I was in elementary school, so... <laughs> I was playing Grand Theft Auto on the PSP. <laughs> oh, my mom, if she ever knew what she bought me. Oh, it was Dante's Inferno. I think she would have been shocked with what she bought me, with how <laughs> that game was. <laughs> That was the first game I ever played that had nudity in it, and it, it's not just a flash of boobs, that had full nudity for both sides. Nice. Eh, every, not every time Lucifer was on screen, you saw his 10-inch long swing everywhere. <laughs> it was a little, uh... Distracting? No, it was like... Awakening? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was just... Awkward. The fact that Mark Hamill voiced him. Oh, hello. No. <laughs> oh, cool. They have the frog lights as uh, player heads and the wandering traders. What is it with uh, Lucifer slash Satan getting interesting voice actors? That's a damn good question. 
Phoenix, why wouldn't they? They're blocks. Micro blocks are part of the vanilla tweaks. Yeah, I know. I for I didn't expect it. Mm. It just makes me happy. Okay. Lucifer slash Satan is an interesting person. Sure. Well, if you're going to have the Prince of Darkness, you might as well give him the, one of the best, a good, a, a, like a really good voice actor. Exactly. Yeah. Like Tom Ellis. <laughs> yeah, I, I just brought it up because uh, in the re-release of uh, b -b Persona 3, yeah, but, no, not Persona 3, uh, but, well, Shin Megami Tensei, one of the games, can't remember which. Anyway, Lucifer was voiced by Paul Eiding. Uh, in case you don't know, Paul Eiding is the guy that voiced, uh, like, Ben's grandpa in Ben 10, and... That's awesome. Uh, and the colonel in, uh, Metal Gear Solid, you know? I never knew that. That's awesome. Yeah. And Paul Eiding is one of those voice actors that always distracts me when I hear him, even though he's a really good voice actor. Recognizable. Yeah, Absolutely. I feel like it's possible. Like he seems like somebody who had voiced Joe or J. Jonah Jameson, but I'm not sure on that. He just has. Oh, that and give me an animated Spider-Man and have him play that, please. <laughs> he would work as J. Jonah Jameson so well. Like I feel like it's something he's done, but I'm not sure. He has not voiced J. Jonah Jameson. That's weird to me. He just has the perfect voice for him. I'm probably thinking of J.K. Simmons. I'm sure he's, he's the only one to voice. He he is Gary Jones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm probably just thinking of him then. Playing J. Jonah Jameson across the multiverse. Hmm. He turned him into an Alex Jones style character for the MCU. I mean, that fits. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. It like, he's one of those characters that you can do a lot with in different directions, just, mm -hmm. you know. Let's go bombastic with it. Yeah. I'm going for it reminds Jones. me, uh, <laughs> I've been getting back into uh, the Defenders series, and you know, talking about MCU stuff. Uh, that's so, uh, like uh, Daredevil, Daredevil. Okay. Uh, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. Well, uh, it might make you happy because I think some of them are getting continuation. Well, I know Daredevil is 100%. Yeah. yeah. But it wouldn't bring him back for a cameo and not give him his own series. Right. But like, as a whole, the series is pretty good aside from Iron Fist stuff, which is... That was the weakest the first, one of all the Defenders. The first season of Iron Fist was straight up bad. Um, second season was okay. <laughs> mm. It's such a cool character in the comic books, and they did him dirty. And yeah. Dirty. That said, though, like the trifecta of Daredevil... Luke Cage and uh, The Punisher. Holy shit. Those three mm -hmm. shows are so good. Uh, Punisher's also getting a continuation, too. Ooh, that's cool. And then they're going to be like... doing something with him in the movies as well, but the next Spider Man movie, maybe? I'm not sure. That's all like, rumors right now. I'm not somebody who typically likes stuff like The Punisher. But the way they handled the series in, you know, the Defender stuff was so good. Mm -hmm. And then Luke Cage was really good too, but I think I'm just saying that because uh, 
it almost feels like the entire series of Luke Cage was put to music. Um, yeah, just because yeah, of fun. just because of the way that the that the lines that the characters say flow. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Like it almost feels like improvisational jazz when you're watching the show. <laughs> and I think the reason why they did that is because it's a very black forward series, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Which isn't a bad thing. In fact, it was. God no. It was one of the few shows that was that too with the Marvel. Yeah, yeah, and it handled being black forward very well. They didn't make a big deal out of it. No, they absolutely they didn't did. Signal. I mean, not virtue yeah. signal, but they made a big deal out of black people and the black community in New York. That was but the yeah, point of the show. That's that's not what I was referring to them. I mean, they didn't try to sell it as this is the quintessential black show. Oh for yeah, Marvel. no, no. Like they try to do now with Miss Marvel being the quintessential show for Muslim people, <laughs> and it's like yeah. missing the point of Miss Marvel if that's all you're focusing on. Yeah, such a cool character, and I have I, I haven't seen the, the live action show yet. And it's just like I'm concerned, especially the way Disney's handling that. Actually, it hasn't like. You know, throughout Miss Marvel's run, so not just, you know, the MCU stuff, but, like, isn't she typically, like, one of those characters not many people like? Oh, no, people hate her because she's a fangirl. Like, she is an in-universe fangirl of the Avengers and just happens to get superpowers because of mm. her. So, in the comics, it's because the carriage and Miss turns her into an inhuman, and this one, she gets magic bracelets. <laughs> That's... Kind of bad. Uh, a, yeah, they could have done paired. They could have just... Gone for the whole parage and introduced the mutants, but they are too afraid to. Uh, like I'm excited to see Miss Marvel, and as, as as weird it is, I am a fan of the character. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I like the idea of it. it's like oh, it's it's literally in a way you could say it's almost like a self insert character for the any writer. It's like oh, you're the fan of the Avengers, now you get to be one of them. <laughs> yeah. I can I can definitely see why she's hated. But it's just I don't know. It's a, a child getting to, a teenager girl getting delivered fantasy of being a superhero. I just think it's a cool idea. That's it. You know what was a really weird MCU TV series? Uh, The Runaways. Never knew that was part of the MCU. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And it's weird. And too woke. I think the only tie it ha I think that has to the MCU is the Darkhold. Yeah. It's the only thing ever mentioned in that show that's in both movies and in other series. Yeah. That was a major thing in WandaVision, and it became a major thing in Multiverse of Madness. And, and it was a major thing uh, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That was a great season with Ghost Rider. Can't wait to get back into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. so I can see the Ghost Rider stuff again. That was the best part of that entire show. I don't think anybody expected Ghost Rider. And not only that, it was uh, Robbie Reyes' Ghost Rider. Yeah. Like, it was Which... just like, out of nowhere, here's Ghost uh -huh. Rider. And the best yeah. part was, it was uh, Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider that turned him into a Ghost Rider. <laughs> it's like, this, this is the... That was peak MCU right there. Yeah, yeah. So I take it I know they're watched, bringing Ghost Rider... Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. then. Hmm? So, uh, I have a friend, and I've made this comparison with that friend that also watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, you know in Astiff movie, the Muffin... That just wants to die. Yeah. That's basically Coulson in yes. like the later seasons. Oh yeah. It, it really is. <laughs> like exact same vibe. Mm -hmm. As the muffin from Astiff movie. Oh, that, that's like 100% accurate. <laughs> just thought I'd mention that. Oh, that's a thunderstorm.
Uh, it's like I got I did not like the way the series went. I kind of stopped watching the last season. That's that kind of fair. Um, I actually really liked the last season, but I think that's just partly because I got really invested in the uh, Fitz and Simmons story. <laughs> I think the reason why it threw me, it, it, it stopped tying in with the movies. That was especially at the time with the Thanos yeah. snap, and it's just like, oh, we're going to do our own thing instead. And it's just like... Just uh, I think that movie. was like, I, I don't think they could do anything about it. Yeah, it's either you exist in the world where half your cast is either dead, or... Uh, no, I think that was like a production thing. They couldn't do it from a production standpoint, because I oh. think MCU stuff, like... Yeah, I don't... Well, it also was a two-part move. Uh, Infinity War and Endgame, two parts, yeah, I think, what, a year apart each, so it would have been really hard to make a season around that. Yeah. But now they have a good time to bring Quake and some of the characters yeah. into the regular MCU now. Yeah. Marvel, do it. <laughs> they, should, they did the Terrigen shit then. They could have easily yeah. brought in more with the Terrigen stuff. Yeah. Instead of making Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. non canon. And uh, another thing with all of that is, I, you know. Uh, a while back, maybe like a year or two ago, I watched Inhumans. It was bad, right? <sighs> Very bad. Terrible. My thing with it is they basically had the setting for the Inhumans in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. already. Like, mm -hmm. sure, it wasn't, you know, the kingdom of Adelan, but they could have turned uh, whatever it was called into essentially the MCU version of Adelan. It's just like, exactly. why didn't they just do that? You know? Uh, uh, have you seen Multiverse of Madness? I have not yet. I am I basically catching up with the MCU. Uh, in the sense that, like, before, you know, starting this catching up with the MCU, I basically only had the context of, like, a couple of the movies and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, I won't spoil anything, then. Yeah, so huh? I'm just, uh, you know, yeah. going by that. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. I still, I still have a bit of catching up with MCU myself. Uh, the only saying. thing I'm behind on now is Moon Knight and Miss Marvel, but I'm waiting for the whole series to be out. I also did watch <laughs> WandaVision, so there's that too. And then there's me refusing to absorb any Marvel stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I, I am weirdly curious about Moon Knight. If only because of one thing I had recently pop up in my timeline. I think I know what you're referring to. The fact that the uh, uh, the one Egyptian goddess is actually in there and full hippo. <laughs> yeah, like... Yeah. I, <laughs> I want to know why, too. <laughs> Just like, why is she here and why is she cute? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they did a good, good design for her, uh, her character. Yeah, like I got a few of the movies to catch up on, including No Way Home. Oh, that's such a good one. That's that's yeah. a one. Yeah, like a, that might have. Go ahead. One of the things I know about that movie is the twist, and even then I kind of saw that coming. Oh, yeah, the way they were trying to hide the fact that who's coming to the movie. Yeah, was... they did not do a good job. No, especially in that one trailer where it was Tom Holland fighting all three of, or all five of them at once. And all of a sudden, the lizard's just being kicked away by nothing. It's like, yeah, I could have just not shown out. that. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I know you want to show the big money shot to draw people in, but you could have done so many different shots. You could have done the first scene where they're fighting. You got the bridge with the. I mean, they did show that in the trailer with the Green Goblin and Doc Ock. Uh, it's like, also, no editing in a way to yeah. make people fair that stuff moves up. 
Yeah, it's like you could have just not caught it before the other Spider-Man kicks him. <laughs> Still a fantastic idea, regardless. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that was genius, bringing them all back. Speaking of Spider-Man, I, I came to a conclusion recently in that the only reason Spider-Man in general, like I'm talk not just talking MCU, but like Marvel in general, is in the Avengers is because he's popular outside of the comics. You know, because he's Marvel's most popular character. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the only reason he's in the Avengers. <laughs> he, uh, it's... Logistically, it's a terrible idea to have a teenager in... Absolutely! Superheroes. Do you know where Spider-Man would have been great? In The Defenders! Yeah, I'm surprised they did not include him in that. We already... Th that was going on when we had uh, No Way Home. No, Civil War. They had... That yeah, was yeah. going on... You could have had him cameo in it. Absolutely! Like, and Spider-Man makes way more sense with the Defenders, because the Defenders are very much a New York-focused thing. 90% sure in the comics he is with them. Yeah, just <laughs> no. Nope. Com yeah, it's like, it's... That's a mm, weird one. <laughs> like, I, I realized that fairly recently. Like, holy shit, he needs to be in the Defenders. Nope, just happened. Go ahead, Giga. Yeah, just nope. Just happened with the main cast. Get in his own yeah. movie, and then have him go into space where he dies. Uh, have you seen Hawkeye? Uh, I Any haven't show? yet. Oh, because it it sort of ties in with the defenders a little bit. Ooh, that's cool. No, but Hawkeye won't be coming for a while, considering it came out after I made my document of MCU order. Oh, um... Oh. My oh, MCU no, no, no. order document stops at Hellstrom Season 1. The fuck is Hellstrom? It's a Hulu exclusive show. Okay. And it is in the MCU. What? Yeah. Or no, it actually is part of the MC. Well, it's as far as I know, it's part of the MCU in the same way that like Cloak and Dagger is. I think that was uh, made separate afterwards. They could do their own story stuff. Yeah. By the way, Cloak and Dagger is really good. Show. Yeah. Oh, it looked like it looked bad to me. <laughs> I never saw it. Like, I was actually really pleasantly surprised with it. Because it's very good. Hmm. Yeah. I think it, like, cancelled really fast, too. Yes! It only has two, two seasons. They're really cool characters in the comics. Yeah. But yeah, the, uh, the only link that Cloak and Dagger has to the MCU is the fact that there is one scene with a newspaper clipping talking about Luke Cage's exploits. Mm. Which, more to the Defenders than the whole Marvel yeah. Universe. And, like, the fact that it's only the Luke Cage reference already makes it like, oh, it's kind of not really MCU then, is it? <laughs> yeah, because, like, they s sort of made the uh, Defenders non-canon but now they're making it canon again because they mm -hmm. reintroduced Daredevil as part of the Spider-Man. Yeah. It's a shame because, honestly, the Defenders have, has been my favorite part of the MCU. I would say... Aside from Iron Fist, which was bad. <laughs> I think that's universally agreed. That's one of the worst things Marvel's ever done. And the thing is, a lot of people fault the actor, and it wasn't the actor's fault because he's a lot better in season two. They say you're right. I blame when it comes to sh when you know it's a good actor. First of all, I always go for right the writing team. Yeah, I mean he wasn't a perfect actor. Don't get me wrong. It's just it wasn't his fault that the show was bad. <laughs> 
Funny enough, he also plays Loras Tyrell in Game of Thrones. <laughs> and in the back. <laughs> I mean, he's not a bad actor, but... No, no. And he isn't the perfect actor for Iron Fist. No. But it wasn't his fault because he's a lot better in Season 2 where he was actually given time to learn the role. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, isn't it in the comics Iron Fist a child, like a teenager, like Spider-Man's age? I'm not as familiar with that, so I, I don't I really know. I vaguely think he is, but I'm not 100% sure. I remember that being the case in Ultimate Spider-Man. That might be what I'm thinking of. Like, they still kept the fact that he's a total dork in Season 2, but I like mm -hmm. that. You know? Yeah. Like, he really is just a total dork, and that's fine. <laughs> You know, talking about all this makes me realize our early MCU was a hell of a mess with continuity. It was. Yep. It's also it... complicated to watch. Phase oh, 2 yeah. was crazy. Yeah, I mean, uh, especially when now they're like, uh, like the Black Widow movie. That takes place, timeline-wise, right after Civil War. But if you're watching it in order, you have to watch it after Infinity okay. uh, Endgame because of the post credit scene of Black Widow. All right. Uh, it's one of those things like my MCU order doc isn't fully ordered chronologically. It's kind of half chronological, half thematic. So, you know. <laughs> I when, when I watch them, I, if I'm going for a full marathon... I watch them in the order they came out in, except for Black Widow. If you're like, watching uh, them chronologically, you have to go Captain America, <laughs> yeah. Captain Marvel, and no one wants to watch Captain Marvel. I don't want to watch it again. <laughs> exactly, I watched it once and I won't watch it again. It was so bad. Yep. I'm kind of hoping uh, the sequel to uh, the Marvels. It's supposed to have Kamala Khan as part of it. Um, oh, well, Monica Rambo's I, was Monica Rambo the one in the little girl, and uh, she was the person who got into uh, the hex in Wandavision. Okay, yeah, she's going to be part of the Marvels. Of course she is. That was part, like, that was uh, very relevant to yeah. uh, like WandaVision. Plot point. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, she's, she's going to be part of the Marvels, Kamala Khan, and, of course, Carol Danvers. And I'm hoping that kind of group up kind of thing is going to be good. Yeah. And let's just throw Doctor Strange in because he seems to be camo... Cam... Cam... Camoing. Cameoing everything yeah that's a joke he should have he should have been in wandavision but the problem is is uh because that's benedict cumberbatch right mm -hmm. yeah like imagine i i can't imagine their uh budget was quite enough to get benedict cumberbatch on a tv show like that oh, with that i don't think it's focused that. on him. he would have stole the show yeah and when you bring in a magic user like him, yeah. and if I talk any further, it will spoil Malcolm yeah, no. Madness. I don't want to spoil that because that was a really Speaking good Speaking of actors stealing the show, you know, I, I forgot to really mention Jessica Jones earlier in The Defenders. Mm -hmm. So the thing with Jessica Jones is, as a whole, it's kind of just mediocre. It's not bad by any means, but it's just nowhere near as good as Daredevil, Luke Cage, and The Punisher. But the first season has David Tennant just absolutely eating the scenery as his character. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, I think, rate it higher than what it really deserves <laughs> because David yeah. Tennant is just... You got the Doctor Who David fans Tennant. coming in. 
I mean, not even Doctor Who fans. It's just like he did Every such a good doctor. job with that character that it it made this otherwise pretty mediocre show a lot more fun to watch. That, that's why you got to appreciate like a lot of Marvel movies too. Without a certain actor, it could be a trash movie. Yeah, like, I've said this before. Detective Pikachu. If you didn't have Ryan Reynolds' voice in Pikachu, that movie would have sucked. Well, there was that, uh, like, not sucked. that, that it, group it of people ver- that wanted Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of wanted Danny DeVito, too, because that was fucking hilarious. That was a meme more than anything. No. Like, that was hilarious. <laughs> uh, but, like, Ryan, uh, Ryan Reynolds carries Dr. Pikachu. He does, yeah. Like I, I that's the only I watch it make because there's just something about Deadpool's voice coming out of Pikachu. Yeah. And especially when Pikachu gets to swear in it. I mean it's not really swearing. But it just makes my day hearing Pikachu swear a little. So what did Pikachu say? There's a few scenes, uh when he was in the cage going against a, the raged out Charizard, he's get me the hell out of here. Okay, well like I've noticed that kid-friendly movies are starting to not consider hell a swear word anymore because mm-hmm. on one of my many rewatches of Zootopia, I noticed that one of the I guess side characters, my brain wants to call them NPCs, but whatever, uh, <laughs> one of them said, hell, are you a cop or not? And I had to actually rewind a minute when I noticed that because, wait, did he just say hell? And I thought that was, well, are you a cop? No, he said hell. Oh, I gotta go rewatch it now. <laughs> yeah. uh, but then there, there was another scene where he was talking to Tim, and he's like, "Your father would be proud of you. You're the best damn partner I've ever had that uh, one, a detective could have, or something like that." Yeah, I've just noticed that they've kind of stopped considering hell to be a swear word. Which is fair. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. not, really it's a swear, not word a swear word. <laughs> no, it's not. But when P- Pikachu gets to say damn in it, and it's like, mm, I like hearing that. It's like such little things, but it makes me, I don't know, just like things you don't expect to hear come out of a Pikachu's mouth. Besides Pika Pika. <laughs> I line this up, right? What the f- what the I mean, fuck? aside from the Ryan Reynolds thing, the other thing with Detective Pikachu is... The visuals were cool. Uh, can I interrupt it, for a minute? Because yeah. I've... Okay, so in Ark Knights, um, you can buy furniture to decorate your base. And I went into the filter to see if there was a way to filter by things that I don't own. And I see this, and I'm wondering, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Ambient. Well, no, not, not that, Ambient. but... At the bottom. Not oh. own this. I don't know what this is. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, uh, it means discount. <laughs> oh. It means discount. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, I, was trying to, I was thinking discard. Does it doesn't mean discarded items? Are you thrown away? It means discount, but it reads as not own this. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, oh, what the fuck? What the fuck, Hypergriff? Was that on purpose? <laughs> I have to assume it was. I was saying something, and now I have forgotten. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm not blaming uh, you or uh, anything. Graphics, it's... Uh, CGI and Detective Pikachu. Oh, right. Yeah, the visuals of Detective Pikachu were really cool. Oh yeah, like, I would agree on that. I mean, okay, yeah, some of them were very disturbing, but mm-hmm. still fun. They did a good job bringing Pokemon to live action. Yeah, yeah. It's that you would think Pokemon has no right going. Yeah. Like, uh, I, like I will always say the goal, the scene. I mean, it's just a glimpse of goal work. But it's mm-hmm. so good. And the Torterra part. So oh god, that's cool. my favorite part. All the gigantic Torteras. 
That might be... And, and they hinted at it. Oh, so well. Mm -hmm. Gigantamax before Gigantamax is a thing. Yeah. I'm just upset the sequel got cancelled. Yeah. It does. I mean, logically, there's no way you can do a sequel to it. Nah. You can be like, saying something. It was more. very much the plot got resolved. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, really well, too. Like, the, you know, it mm -hmm. was a satisfying ending because they fully resolved the plot. The it's only thing nice. I didn't like was, oh, Mewtwo, the most powerful Pokemon in the world. It's like, I can think of ten different Pokemon that can kick Mewtwo's ass right now. Hmm. I mean, it's also a different world, so, you know, it's not the same eh. Pokemon world. Oh, no. So, my opinion is that in Gens 2 and 3, any self-respecting Dark type could take down Mewtwo. Uh, yeah. In Gen 4, it got Focus Blast, so... <laughs> Yeah. And there's also the the whole thing of like in game versus in lore strength, you know. Pretty much. Considering you have anime Mewtwo. Yeah. Yeah. And and manga Mewtwo. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like people saying that there's only one Mewtwo. When it's literally if you have the DNA, you can just turn the machine yep. on and go to town. Yep. As the anime proved with there being two. Exactly. That's just like, uh, that's something that like gives me a brain, that makes my brain hurt when I see people arguing that it's the same Mewtwo across all the games. It's like... It doesn't I, I, have I, you to can't be, see me, but... but I'm waving my hands. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it doesn't have to be, but it could be, but it really isn't that important. Yeah. And I would say last, like, the, the OG Mewtwo, Mewtwo Prime, is caught by Red. Uh, I think Probably. the implication is catch and release. Oh. Oh, that's I'd make Red such a lame trainer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's the implication with most legendaries, though. Well, I think with some legendaries, I I like the idea that they're, they're well, this only works with the godlike Pokemon, but they're the avatars of that Pokemon. And Arceus, Legends Arceus kind of confirms that with Arceus, at least. Mm. I mean, it so makes sense really that finish. Arceus is an avatar rather than the actual uh, deity, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, oh, you caught God. No, you just caught an... A, 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 I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is. Avatar. I mean, that yeah. is an established religious mm -hmm. word. Like, especially, like, like I think that's the case with every deity Pokemon that we catch. It's like, oh, you didn't actually catch the true form. You just caught one of its avatars. Yeah, could be. The question is, what, what happens when it gets released? Does it get released? Like, when you die, does it go away on its own? Because I don't think those can die on their own. I mean, those let's face it, are... even as avatars, I bet they could just pop out of their Pokeball whenever they want and just go, see ya! Yep. If they point, really yeah. Uh, Speaking basically did that, but in reverse in the anime for Journeys. Because, like, basically... With Suicune in Journeys, um, Go obviously caught it, but uh, he was going to release it, and then Suicune just kind of hopped out the Pokeball and kind of just left without being released. <laughs> yeah, crazy. It's, it's like that. The games never explore the true power of yep. legendary Pokemon. While it's like we catch them no. and that's it. Yeah. So oh. reminder. Uh, Mewtwo in Pokemon Special has a spoon. <laughs> I remember seeing a picture of that. <laughs> His spoon is too big. Man. Like, I get the I whole thing about banana. Bending... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Wait, I get on. the whole thing with bending the spoon is a psychic thing, but when did a spoon become a weapon for the psychic Pokemon? Uh, I don't know. The, the thing is, it's... 
I, I believe at some point Mewtwo either like cuts off somebody's limb or something. What the, the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how dark the, the manga is. I don't even think I, is, dark is a good word. It's absurd. Yeah, that that's a good word. It is absolutely absurd. I've said it before, but in the Sword and Shield manga, you know, in Adventures, you know, slash special, uh, like, they literally just kidnap a kid. I remember you showed us those pages and I just couldn't believe what I was reading. All the things. It's just like, that's just weird. Yeah. And they're just this, like... I might... And then, uh, what's her name? What's the old professor's name? I can never remember. In Magnolia. Yeah. yeah, Magnolia. She's just like, don't worry, I'm a celebrity. This is okay. <laughs> oh, this, like when Scarlet and Violet gets their manga, I might just have to read it to see how absurd it is. Because the way things are going with Scarlet and Violet, I'm thinking we're going to see a bit of a more interesting storyline. We have no hint about it whatsoever. We just have speculations. Yeah. But a lot can be done with a full open world game, and I would love to see how the manga tackles that. Also, like, the manga for uh, Sun and Moon, specifically Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, that mm -hmm. was insane. In a good way. Like, it was one of those things where it happens, you're like, holy shit, did they go there? Did they do this? You know? <laughs> because like you know right at the I'll, I'll just kind of spoil this you know spoiler warning for pokemon special uh like right at the end of the sun and moon arc you know they're on the mountain in in the battle and right at the end all of a sudden necrozma just grabs sun and moon and takes them into a portal <laughs> And it's just like, what the fuck just happened? You know? Wait, that's illegal. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the next chapter, the one that starts Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it's like several months later, <laughs> and here's oh, Sun and Jesus. Moon just wandering through um, the Ultra Space realm with the, the <laughs> Nihilego, whichever one that is. Ultra um, Deep Sea, I think? Yeah, I think that one. But, like, they've been wandering around that place for months in a time skip. And it's just like, holy shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, uh, no, no, never mind. Just finish. Go ahead. No, what I'm else? done. That, that, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, for those who play Pokemon Go, did you just catch Nile Lego this week? Last weekend? Nope. I haven't played in this. I got super lucky. One of my friends invited me to a raid. We barely beat Nihiligo, as it was. Pain in the ass of a fight. And then it goes right to the last, almost like to the last five Pokeballs to catch it. What? It was super hard to catch. Was, even with the golden raspberry, it was breaking out of everything. With a great, a, a great curveball throw. Mm -hmm. Might have just been unlucky because my friend caught it on the fir on her first try. <laughs> her sister and me had a very hard time catching it. But I was happy to be able to get one. I also got a shiny uh, Axio for my a raid. First shiny from a raid. Not that nice as I tweeted about. I was very, I was so happy <laughs> about that. Because I've never, like, I don't do raids often, and it was like, okay, I'm just, this raid across from my house, may as well just try it out. Actually, I don't have Axie yet, and it's like, oh, wait, that, sh that doesn't look right. Axie doesn't have a purple neck. Oh, it's shiny. Lucky, though, because Haxorus is an excellent shiny. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why I have it as my partner Pokemon right now, because I want this thing to evolve. And then I missed today, which was Shiny, Kakuga, and Arkan. Mm. Arkan is also like, a pretty I, good Shiny. It is. 
it, it's it's not a. I think it's giant. It's like the feathers change and everything. They're mm. orange and yellow, or orange and green, I think. But with all that said, it looks like we're coming to our end of the show. It's yeah, almost, it's almost yeah. at two hours. I'm probably just going to finish off this wall and then I'll end. All right. Anybody want to uh, talk <clears throat> anything before I get to the end of the wall? I accidentally took over this episode, so... <laughs> That's fine. Good. I, I was quiet for the first hour because I was hyper focused on a difficult Arknights event, and then for the next forty five minutes, and, and then for the next forty five minutes, I was quiet because you guys were talking Marvel. Yeah, I think this is the first time we ever got to talk Marvel in the, sh in the episode yeah. in our podcast. Yeah, how did it take this long? I don't know. Who knows? Especially considering three of us seem to be fans. <laughs> I'm a Marvel head. I love Marvel. <laughs> I, I, I'm That's just the comic like, I grew up on. not p touching Marvel with a 50-foot pole. <laughs> uh, there, I think there's some of it you would like. Mm. I, I'm not a huge fan of the whole comic book superhero genre. And when I do get into stuff like that, it tends to be DC. Uh, speaking of DC, did you see that Joker is getting a sequel? Oh boy. I did. More things for people to complain to. about. Oh please. Complain all they want. The first one was a fucking great movie. I didn't watch it because again, I'm not a huge fan of that genre. But like I, I heard mixed things about it. Some people loved it, some people just took it as an excuse to complain. I think this is one I think you should watch because I think you would really, really like it. And then some other person was like, this is not a good representation of people with mental illnesses. And I'm like, it, it's a movie, dude. I think yeah. it's a good representation of how far someone will go when they're bullied. Yeah. How fucked up can... If you push the wrong person the wrong way at the right time, you're going to create a monster. Yeah. That's what the Joker was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When it comes to like comic book stuff, um, I don't really read superhero comics. I just tend to watch the adaptations and stuff. And mm -hmm. the only ones that I've ever really been interested in, besides Worm, which is like a whole other kind of, you it's know, a deconstruction worms. from yeah. what I've heard. It's a it's a reconstruction, I think. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Um, but like, I mean, I I haven't quite read it, gotten the chance to read it yet. But it's a deconstruction. It's a reconstruction. It's interesting. Um, but uh, when it comes to like mainstream superhero stuff, the only ones that I've ever really liked are the original Teen Titans, Static Shock. Arrow oh God, and the Incredibles. <laughs> that a shock was awesome. It was. Yeah, it was. Oh my God! The like, entire DCAU was very good. Mm -hmm. Oh my oh God! God like, yeah. I just vaguely remember an episode of Static Shock where, like, it was dealing with gun violence, and that was oh, interesting yeah. to mm -hmm. see. They in a did cartoon serious. Yeah, they did. They touched on serious topics. They did so well, and they were like, from what I remember, they were very tactful about it. It wasn't just some shoehorned thing with like, oh, this character is black, so obviously um, they have a gun and they're going to get into trouble with the police and so whatever the fuck. I'm looking at you, Lucifer. Uh, hmm. <laughs> That that is like the only gripe I have about Lucifer is that in season in the Netflix seasons they start to shoehorn in a little bit of wokeism, but it's not enough for me to dislike the show. Although on that note, Lucifer is also tangentially tied to the DC universe. Yeah, it's it it's Constantine. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of Constantine. Yeah, and and it's apparently part of the Arrowverse. Which makes sense because, like, there's that whole huge crossover that Flash had. 
Yeah. And Lucifer cameoed in that. Yeah, and it was like the best cameo of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Like they had the actors from uh, the actual movies. Like they had Ezra Miller cameo as the uh, movie Flash. So I have two things to say about this. Um, I started watching Arrow because I wanted to see that Lucifer scene in context, and I knew it was part of the Arrowverse. I just wasn't aware that the crossover was actually part of the Flash, which kind of also needs Arrow for context. <laughs> And also, um, Arrow, I think season two, maybe it was like season three or something, but the main villain was the same actor that plays Dan in Lucifer. And like, I took one look at this guy and I was like, (laughs) wait, Dan? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I forget what Uh. the actor's name is. (laughs) Going back to static. No, oh, sorry. It, it was like the the. I all I remember is that like there's a villain that had like some keyword code name or last name or something that was blood, and that is where the not Dan comes in. <laughs> I don't remember anything. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember season two of the Arrow. I don't really remember it that well. It might not have been season two. Okay. I just remember that there was a character that was played by the same actor that plays Detective Daniel Espinosa in Lucifer. I would know his name if I heard it. And by that I mean the actor and not the character. Although I probably know the character's name too. Someone's looking you know, if my up. Mom was up. If my mom was up, I'd be able to go ask her because she would know it. Because mm. she was a huge Arrow fan. <laughs> she got me into the Arrow. Mm. I, I think part of it is also, when it comes to superhero stuff, I tend to like heroes like the Arrow, where they don't have superpowers. They're just really good at what they do. Mm. They're human. Anyone could be them. Yeah. And I know Batman is also kind of along the same lines, but I just kind no, of like... No, no. Batman has a superpower. He's rich. So is Arrow. <laughs> so yeah, is Oliver Queen. Is, Oliver is, yeah, Oliver is rich. <laughs> he was Brother Blood? Uh, what? <laughs> was that it? Yeah, Brother Blood? Apparently. What, what's the actor's name? What's the actor's name? Kevin Alejandro. Yes. Okay. Yes, him. But, yeah, uh, you can't make an argument that Batman has superpowers if you don't also argue that Oliver Queen has superpowers. Exactly. I guess being a super... In comic books, when it comes to being rich, you have superpowers. <laughs> and with For that, moment, I think I, that's a... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to basically wrap it up, but go ahead, yeah. say what you want. No, no, I'm, it's not important. Oh, no, go ahead. I, I was going to go off on a big tangent. Don't... Well, that's why we're here, Nate. <laughs> yeah, really? Go ahead. No, it, it, it wouldn't have mattered to anything. <laughs> oh, and I guess we could wrap it all up. Anyone want to close the show? No. Anyone want to say something profound and uh, meaning and meaningful and uh, thoughtful? No. And, uh, and, uh, and that's the end of the show. Okay. <laughs> 